leading the way for race number two here today. And can it be Max Keyless that makes it two on the bounce with 14 laps around this incredible Haret circuit? I'm Liam Hodgins, alongside me as ever this weekend is Jack Goss, bringing you all the commentary action and talking you through all of the races. We've had four races down, and Jack, we've had just what has been an utterly brilliant day of Junior GP action. Yeah, it's been really good here for Junior GP and her F. Obviously, we've had some corking racing, uh, a couple of different storylines as well in Moto 2. We won't spoil that one for you if you want to go back and watch it, catch the highlights, or or rewatch the full race later on the Junior GP YouTube channel as well. But um, yeah, it's been really good action here. And of course, earlier on in Euro European Talent Cup race one, we had some pretty good action too as well. We went right down to the final corner for victory on that one. So we're expecting very much the same here in race two. And as you can see, the conditions are still absolutely beautiful down here. Uh, absolutely gorgeous weather down here. I'm sure a little bit further north there'll be some other racing action going on with just as good sunshine as well. But for now, in the south of Spain, it's absolutely glorious. As a tail peppy monument, so to say, stands loud and proud at the top of the hill here. And I still don't even know what tail peppy is, to be honest, but uh, <laughs> I think it looks cool anyway. So I'll, we'll, I'm sure I'll find out about that and well, whenever it is. Well, 14 laps of European Talent Cup action, and we're just talking about Max Keyless and how incredibly brilliant he has been so far in 2020. Yeah, unbelievable. Man. Incredible, incredible talent is this young man on screen right now from pole position in race number one earlier on today. It was Max Keyless who got the whole shot ahead of Brian Uriarte and Guido Pini as well, your reigning champion. Those three were off and running, along with Dodo Boggio who challenged them and the, well, the entirety of the race ahead of Emmanuel Brinton, who started fifth on the grid as well before he had to serve a long lap penalty for a qualifying infringement yesterday. It was all chopping and changing in the early laps of the European Talent Cup race. Casey O'Gorman in the background on the Vision Track Racing Team machine, number 67, he was coming from 14th on the grid and found himself in the battle for the top six. But it was the top four that were off and running as Hakim Dan Nish, who had a big problem at the start. He had to start from the back of the grid, but found himself with 13th early on before crashing out at turn number 13. So 13th, unlucky for Hakim Danish. Not unlucky though, was the battle for for the lead, and it was Guido Pini running the number one, that wanted his number one back and in the number one position, and he took number one spot ahead of Keyless, but he didn't want that. He wanted to take the lead ahead of Brian Uriarte. These four started putting a lap record running pace as they shot away from the rest of the pack that was led by Casey O'Gorman in the background. Brian Uriarte and Max Keyless would chop and change for the lead, but it was Dodo Boggio that had a little bit of look up the inside before Pini snatched away the second spot from Max Keyless. But it was one of the riders further back that went down, and he will be hopefully back in this race a little bit later on today. Max Keyless, after a few laps in third spot, feel, felt like he needed to start pushing his way to the front, but it was Pini that found his way to the front with an incredible move on Boggio and Brian Uriarte coming together almost elbow to elbow down the front straight with a handful of laps to go. But it's Keyless that found his way back to the front as Pini was shuffled the way back with Uriarte around the outside. Boggio was eventually have to serve a long lap penalty for a track infringement but he wouldn't serve that, so he would drop back into fourth. But in the final couple of laps, Uriarte made a move on Keyless, but ran a little bit deep. And on the run to the line, it would be Max Keyless who would record a third straight win in a row in the European Talent Cup. Uriarte just holding off ahead of Dodo Boggio. He, was dropped, he would eventually be dropped into fourth after a three-place penalty. And Guido Pini picking up a second podium of the season. Tail Pepe, standing <laughs> proud in the background there. <laughs> 32 degrees air temperature, 46 degrees track temperature. It's a little bit warm out there, yeah. isn't it, Jack? It'll be a little bit greasy as well. This morning, it was around about 23 degrees air temperature, so it's really shot up in the last couple of hours here in Hareth as well. Four miles an hour is the wind, but we can only imagine it's a little bit more so than that with that uh, weather dial spinning around in circles. And there's the, some of the monuments of the past here in Jerez, standing loud and proud as well. And well, we'll have to visit that castle next time we come back here. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it looks great as well. Lots of great scenery around here. Just killing some of the flowers as well. Some bird life as well, which our colleague Matthew Dunn back in the UK will be enjoying as well. Yeah, he'll, he'll know what they are. <laughs> we exactly <laughs> That's do. for sure. We do not know what um, they are. I'll stick to what all. I know, which is uh, about the motorcycles. But um, And you know a lot about that, so that's why I'm glad <laughs> I've got you here. 
Uh, not so sure about that. One man that knows a lot about how to ride motorcycles is, of course, Max Kiles, who, uh, as you just saw from the highlights package there, took a pretty impressive win earlier on. Um, it was not exactly the script that we expected. I mean, look at that record he's got this year. The Incredible. Only, the only blip, if you can even call it that, is that fourth place in Estoril. But actually, he came from 28th on the grid to get that fourth place anyway. So, uh, yeah, pretty unbelievable. What does that say? Maximo Killer. Maximo Killer. Maximum attack. Max Killer. Wow. I was called Ma Max Impressive or Matey Max earlier on, but that, that <laughs> one's a bit more direct and... Yeah, more than Keller vibe going on there with it. Uh, but he has a Keller right now on circuit. It's three race wins in a row for Max Keeles. And one man that we're really wanting to stop that momentum going from four wins in a row is Brian Uriarte, who you have a feeling it's going to be really those two that are fighting out for the championship this year. As you can see, two wins in Estoril, two second places on the bounce, but a little bit of a blip there in Valencia, race number one. He'll be hoping to reverse that fortune. He's 10 points behind Max Keeles in the championship dive-bombed him into the final corner in race number one, ran a little bit wide, and Keele has got the cut back. So it was as close as you like. It could have went either way in race number one. So Uri Arte will be hoping to, well, go one stop, step further in race number two here today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm going, speaking of going further, in race number two here today is, of course, reigning champion Guido Pini, the number one machine. Uh, probably his best race of the year last time out, I think. Um, I know that he finished second in Valencia one, but also Max Keeles was way up the road. Uh, there in, in the first Valencia race. But yeah, Guido Pini looking a little bit more like the, the champion that we know he is and really getting his title defense on track. But still, ultimately in the end, he lost out nine points uh, to the way of Max Quiles uh, earlier on today. So Pini definitely desperate to uh, get back to winning ways here in ETC. Yeah, the good thing is with uh, Pini, he is in that top group and he is starting to find that consistency we know he's so renowned for as it helped him towards the championship in 2022 so here is david gonzalez he featured in the battle for well this the battle the second battle for fifth spot earlier on today david gonzalez going from a fourth spot had a podium earlier on the year in estrel but look at that result uh 10th 10th and 12th he's had a bit of a a problem in the last few rounds so to speak he was in that battle but he was shuffled all the way down to 12th in race number one he'll be hoping to go a lot better than that in race number two here today. And I'm sure he will, as he starts alongside the the man from Britain uh, on Brit Watch, it's Emmanuel Brenton. Here he is. He had to serve a long lap penalty for, what was it? Riding uh, the wrong, riding way. wrong way. We're yeah. still trying to figure out what that so is, aren't I we? I presume <laughs> that it meant in, uh, in pit lane, just going down the, the wrong way, maybe possibly at a technical problem or something. But yeah, 11th there in the first race here in RF. Obviously starting from fifth, but had that long lap penalty. So certainly not too bad, but I'm sure that now he'll have his eye in for a, a much better finishing position because, I mean, yeah, you can't really ask for too much better slot on the grid than on the second row. You know, it doesn't really get that much better from there. Yeah, it's a great position to be, and he picked up his second best result of the season despite that long lap penalty. So from fifth on the grid, as long as he can keep it clean, he will definitely be in the mix and aiming for what we know he can be a f top five result. Now, Hakim Danish. I think he's going to have to start changing that number, to be honest, <laughs> because that number 13 has brought him no luck in race number one, crashing at turn number 13 from 13th after starting from the back of the grid. Uh, they say it's unlucky for some. It was definitely unlucky for Hakim, but he'll be hoping to reverse that fortune in race number two here today. Incredibly fast. I mean, he started from 30th. By the end of lap number one, he was in 15th. Yeah. Fought his way through to 13th before tipping off in lap two. Yeah, we're not too sure uh, exactly what happened to him on the grid uh, for race one, whether it was just that he stalled the bike or had a technical issue. We did see them that they had to fire it up again, so it's possible that Hakim just had a, a lucky little uh, stall there uh, of the motorcycle. So hopefully, as long as that doesn't happen this time round, he'll be on for a much better result because he has been quick here this weekend as well. Uh, decent qualifying position and his race pace looks all right. The man that you said was finishing in the worst spot in any racing, fourth. <laughs> yeah, fourth is, no one wants fourth. <laughs> Nobody wants fourth, but I'll take it over <laughs> a fifth any day, so it's not too bad in my eyes. Dodo Boggio, four fourth places on the bounce, and it could have been, well, it would have been third if he never pack, picked up that long lap penalty in race number one, because he crossed the line in third, but was given a three-second time penalty at the end of the race, so dropped him back to fourth. So he'll be looking to make amends at a circuit that he picked up a double race victory here last year. Rico Salmella, the flying fin, uh, not too bad first time out there today. Uh, fifth place was pretty good, and as you can see there, like he's fairly consistent, is Salmella. He seems like a really complete little rider, um, fantastic talent for the future. <laughs> you just hope that he maybe grows a little bit because <laughs> he's going to struggle on some of the bigger bikes. But uh, anyway, he's doing well, a great job both here and also in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. 
Yeah, a lot of growth spark he will definitely do. And another rider that I remember being very diminutive was Dennis Onchu. And now look at him, he's the tallest out of the Onchu twins. So yeah. it can happen, it can definitely happen. Alberto Fernandez, the number 93. <laughs> he's a very good character as Alberto Fernandez. He loves live he loves living life on the edge, racing motorbikes, and you can definitely see that in his character as well. So a couple of podiums so far this year. Unfortunately, he had a, a not a great result in race number one. Sixth place, I say it's not great, but not great by his standards. And he'll be hoping to go a couple of places better. He managed to nab Casey O'Gorman on the run to the line in race number one. Casey O'Gorman starting from 14th, finished seventh in race one earlier on today. Yeah, O'Gorman definitely won that race is better than he qualifies. Um, as he were displayed in, in the first race, 14th, 7th. Jesus Rios, uh, he was battling away in the top 10, wasn't he? Yeah, eighth place, there he was. Um, certainly not too bad, like as you see from last time out as well, fifth place. So Jesus Rios won that this year has taken uh, a good step up uh, and really now uh, on the Emory Talent Team bike seems to be uh, battling away for, for decent positions more often than not. Yeah, Jesus Rios has uh, really come strong and this is season. He was in, in that battle for a podium position in Valencia race one before he eventually ran into the back of Fernandez and Casey O'Gorman on the final corner. So Brian Uriarte, he'll be aiming for victory, but alongside him is your championship leader and pole setter, Max Quiles. Yep, so here's the grid then for race two, the final race of the day four, ETC. We've still got one more after this, don't you worry. So Aquiles, Uriarte and Pini, they are your star-studded cast on the front row. Gonzalez, Brinton and Danish, hopefully he gets away fine this time from Boggio. Salmela and Ferrandez, you can guarantee that all those guys will be up there in the mix. Every single one of them knows how to get a podium. Rios, Torres, Donoso and Luciano O'Gorman, watch out for him coming through once again. Hopefully he can get away with that front pack. They just had a little bit of a gap uh, that they were unable to bridge last time. Blanc, Fernandez, Alcina and then number 17, Alamar on Row seven from Perón, Liguri, Zani, Van Tritt, Bertola, Belon, Wojciechowski, who crashed out in race one, and Serpa. And then completing the grid. The last row of the grid, the last chance qualifiers, Agostinelli, Nicolis, and Pugliese. Yeah, Pugliese was actually very lucky to come through the last chance. Oh, we've got someone else. That's Uriarte. That, that, no, it's uh, not. No, it's uh, Salmela. Salmela. Unbelievable. So what's happened to Rico Salmela then? Well, one of us the same problem his teammate Hakim Danish had in race number one today. So that'll be a back of the grid start for the finish rider if they can get that start. Well, that's such a shame for Rico Salmela. Lightning strikes twice, doesn't it? For the talent team, for Australia Galicia team, sorry. Um, wow, yeah, that's seriously unfortunate. We'll have to find out what happened exactly there, but it looked like they were sticking it on the, uh, on the electric starter to fire it back up. So possibly just uh, another unlucky stall there on the grid, but well, maybe it was just an electronic issue. You never know. They'll be definitely looking that at that back and base when they get uh, the bikes back to headquarters in Spain, wherever it is. <laughs> anyway, so I'm not exactly sure. I know somewhere further north than that, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. So air temperature, 32 degrees, drag temperature, 43, six kilometers an hour, four miles an hour. That is air speed as well. And well, I don't think they've got any problems or any hope of uh, getting pushed off the bike with any of the air pushing on past them, even though how diminutive and light these little bikes are as well. So. Good, good to see Danish go through there, so he has got away yeah, time. We know he's there. No <laughs> problem. Uh, unfortunately, he's passed his bad luck to his teammate, number 27, Rico Samuelo. So the flying Finn is going to have to do a lot of flying uh, to come through uh, from what's it going to be? How many riders is there in this? is 30 riders in there, so going to be all the way at the back there. Well, there's your championship standings. Matt Keeler's on 108 points, leads it over Brian Uriarte in second spot. A lot bit further back, you had Guido Pini as well and the Mexican Championship. But it looks like it's those two, Brian Uriarte on the number 51 machine, who's just taken the long lap penalty loop ahead of his teammate, Emmanuel Brinton. There's Hakim Danish, so he, thankfully, he's getting the right to the credits you mentioned earlier on, Jack. But yes, Brian Uriarte will be hoping to reverse the the form that Max Kielez has really found in the last couple of race, meeting, race meetings and retake the championship lead, or at the very least, stop that run of victories that Max Kielez will be on in the moment. He's hoping for four, but Brian Uriarte is looking for his third win of the season here at Arena. So, the revs will be rising shortly. Guido Pini on the outside of row number one, on the number one machine, the AC Racing Machine, last year's champion, and there's a champion that he succeeded.
Max Killer is the, not the 28. He was a 2021 champion. And we have, yeah, it's Jack, you just pointed to the screen there. Yeah, Rico Samella on the number 27 machine. So just like his teammate, Hakim Danish in race number one, he's managed to get that bike restarted again. And he's starting at the very back in 13th place. The green flag waves in the background. The revs are rising, the red lights come on, and away out they go now. And Brian Uriarty got a demonic start from the front row of the grid. And we've got a red in the background, the number 95 that is, who's pulling off to the side of the track. Not quite sure who that was just there, but we will have a look at that. But thankfully, they're out and okay and not collected by another red. But leading the way for now is Brian Uriarty, at least from Keyless. Pini as well, as you went. Oh. Race number one, Brian Uriarty with a big swooping lane into turn number two. Hacking Danny, so he's showing what he can do when he gets off the line ahead of Boggio as well. So the top four are as you were, but they've just slotted Danish into in fourth as well. So Danish, he's shown strong from early on and you've got a Raider well out wide there onto the green as well. So further back, the number 11 there, a disastrous start. David Gonzalez from fourth spot in the ground. He's all the way down to 12th place now. So David Gonzalez has a lot of work to do to try and catch the leaders. Well, that's twice then for David Gonzalez because he did the exact same in the first race. He slipped down to 12th in the early laps as well. Uh, one rider that did make a good start is Casey O'Gorman. He's gone from 14th to 9th and he's right on the back of already what is a lead group starting to break away. So Casey this time looks as though he may be able to tag onto the back of it. But I'll tell you what, look at this. Keyles and Uriarty are already doing the business and they've pulled a little bit of a gap over Pini. Wow, it's this great action between your two championship contenders. It was actually Zani on the number 95 in the Fenwick Work Mir Junior team that pulled off to the side of the track. But it looks like he's got going again and he's already back up at the 20th spot as we've got a message coming through. No jump starts. So what you see is what you get. And what we have right now is Max Keyles leading the way from Brian Uriarty with Giro Pini just dropping back a little bit. But he's got a gap all the way back to Dodo Boggio in fourth spot as a complete lap number one. Udi RT up the inside. Matt Keeles can't have an answer for that. And he holds station. So Brian Udi RT tried that in race number one, ran a little bit wide, but this time made no such problems as he take off lap number one. Lap one complete. Udi RT leads from Keeles, Pini, Boggio, number 93, Ferrandez, Rio. Danish and Keyless back up the inside, as good as you like there. Udi is going to try and fight back into turn number two. Looks over his championship rival, Leonard Bates, but Keyless bopping and bopping all over the brakes there as he tries to get the thing stopped, and Keyless back into the lead. Fernandez has made a good go of it on lap one. He's came up from ninth to fifth, but now looks as though he's got the bit between his teeth to close down this top four, which we're already starting to pull away. We did wonder if Pini was maybe just going to see these two romp off into the distance, but no. He has closed that gap as Kiles was looking at the inside once again. Yeah. Certainly brave through turn five, but it's the same as race one. It's these top four that are going to set the bar. Yeah, these top four have been absolutely incredible all day today, all weekend as well. They really have been the riders to beat, but Ferrandez is coming under better pressure from Danish. Danish back up the end. Oh, Pini chops off the front of Kiles into Pedroza corner there. Kiles, uh, Pini we should say was brilliant at that in race number one, really diving for the apex and late on the brakes as well. So that's just giving Brian Udiarty a lot better breathing room for the moment from Matt Keyless. Casey O'Gorman, as you saw in the background there, he's in eighth spot just ahead of his fellow Brent or fellow person from the British Isles. She said, I can't really call an Irishman a Brit, to be honest. I'll get into a lot of trouble no, for that. Yeah. <laughs> Casey O'Gorman, the Irishman, he's in eighth ahead of the British rider, uh, Emmanuel Brenton, who's from fifth in the ground, he's dropped back a little bit. Yeah, Casey O'Gorman does actually say, uh, as you do say, lead that uh, next group now. So we'll see what Casey can do. We know he's quick in the race, but there is a little bit of a gap already. There's about three quarters of a second of open tarmac for him to close down. So completing this lap there in his Ferrandez once again, gets busy, dives to the inside of Hakim Danish. It is going to be Uriarty that leads. Pini is second, followed by the two teammates, Aspar, junior team riders, Kiles and Dodo Bojo. Dodo, I thought he was going to look to the inside there. Tell you who Fernandez. is looking to the inside for Fernandez. <laughs> late, square little. Oh, look at that riding style. It's from incredible. From isn't it? He really hangs off that, gets really, really low. Incredible stuff from Fernandez. A really impressive riding style. It just disappears off the side of the bike. You don't see where he went. <laughs> see if you crash in the bike, continue to just think if Fernandez was still on it somewhere to be seen. But there is Danish, fastest lap of the race at 147.918. That was in comparison to, well, it's only a couple of tenths off what was uh, said earlier on today, which was an well, actual fact. That was a faster lap than what was said earlier on today. By a tenth of a second, it was a 148.063 set by Jesus Torres. 
in race number one. So already we're lapping a lot quicker than what we did earlier on today. And it's Danish that sets the fastest oh. lap. Well, as everyone's Larry on the brakes, but it's Uriarty that just leads ahead of Keyless. But Uriarty's well away on the green, on bobbling onto the, the curb. Looks over his shoulder, see where everyone else is. Keyless comes past him. Uriarty slots into second. He's got Dodo Boggio all over the back of him. But here comes Pini. He's going to mug both of them. Not quite. Just gets Boggio for now. But he will certainly have a look on Brian Uriarty's Ferrandez is in the mix and Danish looks up on the inside he slots back into fifth so it's all chopping and changing and that all happened because Brian Uriarty ran a little bit wide here we go he's on the oh yeah so he's trying to just avoid the track limits warning there but he's ran over the other side of the curb this uh, it's a bit of a, a a little bit of a dip there on the other side of the curb and it really uh, he, unsettles the machine. Well, that's that's why he went a little bit wide. You see he had a little bit of a front end moment halfway through the corner, right on the apex in the middle, and it just sent him wide there. But uh, smart riding as well to be able to look over his shoulder and just slot back in safely before tipping into turn seven, which is a pretty fast one in these machines. So, oh, must What's have been a mistake the there for Ferrandez. Uh, not too sure what happened there in the background, but possibly maybe just had a little bit of a moment on the rear because he's really slow coming out of the final corner. And now he's got a lot of work to do. But what it will do is behind that group of O'Gorman, Gonzalez and Brinton uh, and Co. <laughs> um, they, they'll certainly have like a little bit of a, a rabbit in hair uh, marker to chase. Yeah, Ferrandez, if they can tag onto the back of Ferrandez a little bit. We know Ferrandez has got the pace to try and catch this group back up, especially if they start chopping and changing their uh, positions or stop, start messing each other up, basically, start handbags at dawn. And you see there's a couple of riders on the tiny monitor just slapping down, so I'm not sure who that was. However, it's Max Keyless that still leads away. These two are nose to tail, stuck together like glue. Uriarty pulls out the selection of Rindy outside. You can't get Rindy outside of Keyless. We know how great he has in the base. Okay, maybe I'm a oh, little bit wrong, but I thought that was going to happen for a split second. And Uriarty tries to get Rindy outside of Keyless and to turn number six, Pedroza at corner. Boggio still there, but Pini, he shot back to fifth spot. And talking about Ferrandez, I think he's just dropping back into the clutches of that group behind as Uriarty slides up the inside at Jorge Martinez Aspar corner. I'm sure Jorge Martinez Aspar won't enjoy that at his, at his corner with one of his riders slipping back to second. <laughs> yeah, probably not, actually, if we can play it now. But then, so it is Uriarty who uh, seems to be pretty comfortable there at the front in this race so far. Obviously, it's all chopping and changing, but more often than not, it is Uriarty that is leading this one. We look back to what Ferrandez is doing now, because after that mistake, it's, uh, it's a critical one for him now to, well, make or break his race. But at the minute, it looks like he's losing time around this lap. So quite possibly that little mistake from Ferrandez is going to see him out of contention for the win in this one, or even a podium. Line Finn watch, we have Rico Samella from the back of the grid. He's already up into 11th spot on the end of Latin <laughs> five. He's absolutely on a mission. So he's in that group with Rios, Brinton, Gonzalez, and O'Gorman. He's right on the back of it, but he's there. That's such a shame because Samella showed great speed. Last time round, Samella set a 148.7. That's almost as fast as Keyless, who was a leader last lap, a couple of tenths off. Brian Uriarty, so Rico Samella, without that problem, he would be well in the mix, potentially with this leading group. Yeah, he's got about, what is it? He's got 1.9 seconds, now 1.6 seconds of open time back in front of him to the next person, which is Emmanuel Brinton, his teammate. So, got a little bit of work to do, has Rico Samella, but he is a very quick boy, so you would be uh, not too surprised if he goes about it and actually closes that gap. Akeem Danish is getting a little bit busy now from fourth all the way through into second. Great move on the brakes there from the number 13. So, certainly showing that if he didn't have that problem in the first race, he would have been right up there as well. He's certainly shown me that that number 13 certainly is not bad luck for him at all after me trying to tell him to get rid of it because I thought he was bringing him all the bad luck in race number one. Hakim Danish is still chasing his first. Oh, they have Brian Udiarty out there in the blue there. So, yeah, he doesn't want to be running out there too much, but he had a lot of a moment there. Brian Udiarty is really pushing that front end. We've seen him out on the green and on the blue a couple of times in this race, and then we've got Hakim Danish out there as well. As everyone's looking over his shoulder, and Max Keyless, when he looks over his shoulder, Kiro Pini says, thanks very much, I'll just uh, take that from you. You know, one third, I certainly do, and I'll take that happily. As Danish is shaping up and moving his teammate into Pedroza corner, into Lorenzo corner, not quite. Dodo Boggio looking around the outside of his teammate Max Keyless. Max Keyless here, it looks like he's a little bit 
Well, just keeping his powder dry for the moment as the Raiders take off another lap. So it's Uriarty ahead of his teammate, Danish. Danish popping out of the slush here late on the big set of board. Well, Danish lead. Yes, he will. Can he hit the apex? He can, but oh. Uriarty jumps back up the inside and retakes the lead. And this is great racing from the teammates, the Monlau teammates, the Australia Galicia, Zero Zero, in the terms of Brian Uriarty and Mo Motel Monlau for Hakim Danish. Guido Pini still in third, but you've got Kiles and Bojo rounding out your top five. It's a group of five, it's a 10-wheeler at the front. Here we go again, late on the break, sticks out the leg, the doctors dangle into turn at number one. Just a, probably a little bit too late on the brakes for Hakim Danish. Runs a little bit wide, and thank you very much. Here comes Brian Uriarty, swoops back into the lead. Yeah, perfect example there of just going in a little bit too fast. Not too far that you go deep into the corner, but just the other guy that's braked a little bit later, able to turn that bike tight. Taylor on Brian Ariati really throws it in and carries a lot of lean angle and corner speed when he's taking those big sweeping lines. Uh, it's not much of a wonder why it's a little bit difficult to pass when he's at the front because he carries so much corner speed. As you see that Pini now diving up the inside through turn eight on Hakim Danish. So Danish down to third. That won't worry him too much. We see the Aspar teammates going out, Hammer and Tong behind them as well. So Boggio moves up into fourth. And race winner and championship star at the minute, Kiles is down to fifth and looking behind him as well. Wondering if uh, Kiles maybe just isn't feeling the pace here. Yes, uh, a little bit worrying for Kiles on his point of view if he's starting to look over his shoulder right now. These top three, it's like, it seems like the Aspar boys are just starting to struggle to behind us to see that. Uh, Kiles yeah. right back up there saying <laughs> the module. Fine. Yeah, he's all right. He's not no problem there at all. Maybe just wants to chill out a little bit until the last five laps of the races. We've seen so many times from Max Kiles in European Talent Cup and in Red Bull because he really starts to push his way towards the front in the latter half of the race. So for now, it's Brian Udiarty that has Pini on him. Brian Udiarty again looking over his shoulder. I don't know what he expects to see there. I don't know if he expects to see maybe the, the same riders or maybe they pulled away, but he keeps doing that. He's just going to give the other riders, I don't know, a bit of a psychological advantage that maybe they're starting to put Brian Udiarty under a little bit of pressure that make them think a little bit more as Kiles is the yeah, one that's running out now. Yeah, very wide there. Out towards the car park route. Pini up the inside. He's really doing that, that signature Pini move that we see we saw so much of him in race number one. So it's a dart down the back straight now. Slipstream City it is here. Hakim Danish pulls out of the slipstream from his teammate. Uriarty. Is it Danish is going to lead the way? No. Yes, it is. Lay on the brakes. I thought Pini was going to be later of the late breakers. But it's Hakim Danish who takes the lead. He's hit the front for the first time in the race, only briefly though, as Pini rides around the outside into turn number seven. That was great commitment from the front end from Guido Pini. And we've got a track limits warning for the Raider who's just hit the front. It's flashing up on your screen. Guido Pini, we've not, I don't think I've seen him run it, but he must have done it. Three times he's done it. So if he does it again, he will be given a long lap penalty. Now that's actually later than what he did in race number one. Within three laps, he was already given a track limits warning and he was absolutely fine for the rest of the race. So we know he can do it but he's just taking a few liberties at the moment uh, with the track limits as Brian Udiarty, we take second. Yeah, we'll see then what Pini can do now that he's at the front, obviously. Seems like he's got some pretty good speed here, looking a little bit stronger, Ooh. you would say, than he did in race one, but Brian Uriarty definitely has something to say about it. He's loving being at the front, is Uriarty. Oh, 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 wow. great move. We'll see how that speed of uh, Brian Uriarty's Honda is, because I'll tell you what, Pini on the back straight, he managed to overtake him before turn six without even a slipstream. So we'll see what Pini does now. If he can get up the inside, he does not. And in fact, Danish comes through with a double bubble slipstream, fires through to second. And <laughs> once, again, Uriarty. Once again, Uriarty gets a face full of the number 13 right behind. Oh, he had a bit of a moment in the rear end there, did uh, Uriarty there as he came out of turn number two. A little bit of a bobble there. We've seen a few times he's having not just a front end bobble, but now he's having a rear end one. Maybe tyre trouble's coming into play here with the track temperatures north of 30 degrees Celsius. So, oh, a Pini, but he is very good into these uh, fast swooping corners as Guido Pini he really does take liberties in the front end of that number one machine. And blasting down the street again, we'll see if this time around he pulls out and gets past Uriarty before they even get to the breaking zone of turn at number six. He has done it again, but this time around it's oh, Oy. sideways style from Hakim Dice. How did he get that stopped? I thought he was going straight on for a second there. That was absolutely incredible from the young Malaysian there in the number 13. So it's uh, Hakim Danish that went and pulled the sideways. That takes the lead. He's on the green as well. So he'll begin a track limit warning shortly if he keeps doing that. And Pini has done a, a perfect Pini move. 
and he's back into the lead after pulling up the inside and ahead of Hakim Danish and Brian Udiarty. This is just a repeat of last lap again. Udiarty back up the inside of Angel Nieto corner. Yeah, it's not too much of a surprise to see Hakim Danish doing well here in race two in a ref. Last year, it was his personal best result. He finished second on the podium here, did. Oh, a couple of riders dropping down now. That's yeah. Luciano and Brenton. They look like they've come together. And probably turn, there we are, it's flashing up on the screen now. So Luciano and Emmanuel Brenton, they've crashed out of this race. As Bodge goes for a move out on the inside. Brian Uriarty. Very good into Lorenzo Corner as Dodo Bodge went around the outside of his teammate, no less than Max Keeles, a couple of laps ago. So Dodo Bodge was finding a lot of. Oh, I, didn't, I was going to say he's finding a lot of form in the brakes, but so is Brian Uriarty. I'm not sure if he's gone a bit, little bit deep there. He has, as we see, the two riders have gone down together. So that looks like it could have been turn number six. Yes, out there, so not sure who took out who, but thankfully both riders are okay. As it's chopping and changing between Uriarty and Pini. Is Pini going to get him into turn number four? He's not. So Brian Uriarty heads the front once more. Yeah, Brian Uriarty, as we said so many times, just really wanting to get to the front of this race and control it from there. Denise looks like he's going to dive up the inside of Boggio into turn five. We look back now then to Casey O'Gorman, who's leading that second pack in sixth place and doing a fine job of it. Indeed, Ferrandez, that one mistake he made really has ruined his race and any potential chance of battling away for the podium. So he'll be certainly spitting feathers. After this oh. one, oh, it's down into turn six. It looked like chaos in the leading group. There's Rico Salmella right in the middle of this now. If he finishes sixth from starting at the back, that would be magnificent. Rico Salmella, he was about two seconds behind that entire group three laps ago, so certainly Rico's been getting a shift off. He really, really has. The flying fan is well and truly flying along right now, but so is Max Quiles. He has gone from the back of this group to second in this train now of the 10 wheeler. Five and a half laps to go, but we saw them going into Pedroza corner just out of shot there, and it looked like absolute disastrous was about to unfold going into the right hand at the end of the back group. But thankfully, they've all come out the other end of it with Udi Arti leading Quiles, Pini, Boggio and Danish has been shuffled all the way back to the back of this one. But as Pini looks up the inside, Boggio is going to do it again. He's around the outside, or was Pini going to shuffle him out? Now, Italian on Italian now, he has done, but side by side to go. Close, clean action as they come across the line. It's going to be Uriarte, Quiles, Boggio, Pini, and Hakim Danish. Five laps to go. This is anyone's race right now, but Uriarte is leading it absolutely brilliantly at the front. Yeah, difficult one to predict this. We know what Keyless is like on the last lap. He's certainly going to be a hard rider to beat. But also Boggio, we saw how good he was on the last lap. Just unfortunate for him that he had that long lap time penalty because uh, he almost pitched second place in the last lap in the first race. So certainly do not count him out. He won both races here last year, don't forget. So he knows how to win here as his teammate Keyless looks down the inside. Oh, really oh. hard to run the outside. Who's going to be coming out? It's going to be Keyless, right? Or the side by side. Who's going to be here comes Bodjo, here comes Pini as well and you've got Hakim Danish in the slipstream of Pini it could be a five a breast into Pedroza corner late on the brakes and latest on the brakes to Zuri Artis who sweeps around the outside of Pini and Quiles who we thought had taken the lead of the race he's back to four yeah that corner speed there of Uriarte through two and six is incredible every time he just seems to open the gas earlier than everyone else drifts out a little bit wider on the exit but he keeps that momentum up and that's so crucial on these little bikes that don't have a lot of horsepower you can't punch off the corner so if you can keep the momentum through the corner it really helps you down the next straight incredible riding by all five of these riders Pini is still is one of the riders that I still do not have a, a grasp on of what his tactic is in this group a few of them you sort of have a Uriarty wants to lead from the front. Boggio, he's happy to set where he is. as well. And Hakim Dani, she doesn't seem too bothered from where he is, but Pini just wants to be leading it all the time. And he's happy to set back, and I just don't know what his plan is of attack at all. As Boggio, his plan of attack is second place into turn number 13. So he is into, well, into probably the highest place he's been in all race into second spot, just behind Brian Uriarty. With four laps to go as the birds fly past the camera, camera screen, and Pini, is it going to be him? It takes the lead. No, Boggio heads the front for the wow. first time. So Boggio is now in the lead of this race, but runs a little bit deep in turn one. Uriarty back up the inside, late on the brakes, and it's all chopping and changes. Hakim Danish looked up the inside of Max Keyless. Uriarty out a little bit wide, but he'll have to run through turn at number three, and Boggio can't make a move into four, but can he set up a move into turn number five, where we know the Aspar machines have been very good on exit of four, and he tries to look around the outside of Uriarty. That's going to leave the door open for Pini, this is great racing by these top five. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's changing every corner, isn't it? It's hard to keep up with what's going on exactly, but one thing you do know for sure is that every single one of them is going to be throwing a move in at some point on every single lap. Now, we come down towards turn six. They're going to go three abreast. Boggio's elected to go to the outside. I don't think that one's going to work. And number 51, Uriate, once again, gets to turn six early and gets on the gas out the corner. And he's going to make sure throughout the rest of this lap that he has to keep his corner speed up. Otherwise, they're going to dive up the inside. I can guarantee you that Pini will go for it right now. Yep, his like, favorite move. Goes for it once again and pulls it off. Can he hold it tight or is he going to cut wide? Uh, he has done. Brian Uriate looks like he's oh, going to... Oh, that, that was close. close. I thought that, that was going to be a big accident. Incredible stuff by Brian Uriarte, swooping round the outside of Gino Pini into Angel Nieto corner. It's like clockwork every single lap from Pini up the inside of someone into turn number eight. I just wanted to point out Rico Salmelo watch. He just hit the front of the second group into second. He's just been shuffled back a little bit. But it's all actually Oh, I thought Poggio was about to run into the back of his fellow countryman, Guido Pini, but he still holds it somehow. Uh, four laps to go, three laps to go. As it come across the line now, who is it going to be? Udi Arti's leading the way. Pini, he tucks out from behind the slipstream into turn number one. Poggio's the Aquiles. Danny, she's on the back of this. And Pini retakes the lead, but we've seen he runs wide. Uriarte chops back up, he looks over his shoulder, see, oh, and then almost wipes his front wheel away. This is great stuff. Whoa, oh, Kiel and Danish. Contact between them as well. Jeezy, peeps, I thought it was going to be a big one. <laughs> so Kiel's then barges his way through, and Hakim Danish just goes through him here. Got a random mess looking through. So up into fourth end for Kiel's, and I think that was a little bit of a uh, an eye opening thing because he just saw there was a slight, slight bit of gap there from Danish up to fourth, up to third place, uh, and he's gone straight through immediately to get right back on the on the rear end of his teammate now, and he's going to be tucked into the slipstream of Brian Uriarte. In fact, no, he pops out of it. He's already past Uriarte. Uriarte struggles with top speed on that straight. Not sure if he's a little bit heavier than the rest of the guys. I mean, he's still tiny. So I can't really see how it's that. But all of a sudden, Kiles hits the front. Look at this again. The Raiders in fourth and fifth. Kiles punts Hakim Danish out of the way. You knew he was really wanting to get to the front of the group. He's in the lead now. But to do that, he really had to shuffle out the young Malaysian from a fifth spot there. It's all changed. Bodjo's back into second now. And we've got Uriarte, he wasn't there for very long. So two and a half laps to go. This is really, really heating up. The thunder has come and it's thundering around this horrendous circuit. Kiles, who was in fifth, all but just half a lap ago. He's now telling the other Raiders to follow him. And I don't know why Kieles is doing this. I don't know if he's trying to get him to follow him. He's in the lead of the race. <laughs> Some nods to the heads there from the AC racing team. They look like they, uh, <laughs> well, I can't really tell if they're nervous or they think it's going to plan or what, because it's just chaos down here. So look at that. The old switcheroo there from Brian Uriarte. Boggio goes up the inside, but Uriarte bites back straight away at him. It looks as though number one of Guido Pini is going to have a little Tasty look down the inside. No, he's not. It's actually, Poggio was pretty quick there with the slipstream from Uriarte. And all up the front, we always say it, every time it comes to the last couple of laps, Kiles somehow finds a way to just vanish himself up towards the front. And he's right there now. Oh, a bit of a moment oh, there from Kiles. You see that, and it made missed. Uriarte set up, and Boggio, he comes swooping through that, as does Pini. But Kiles, who at the moment, he still finds himself in the lead. I was about to say, the cream always rises to the top, and then Brian and... Max Kiles' case, it really does happen. It's Brian Uriarte swooping around the outside at turn number five. You don't do that there, Cito Pons corner. It'll be a move if it comes off. That will be perfect for Cito Pons himself, but he's actually lost a place to his teammate Hakim Danish as Dodo Boggio comes out of the slipstream four best into turn number. No, oh, and Danish, Danish is the latest of the late breakers, oh, oh. and he swoops into the lead. So from fifth at the start of the street into the lead, Hakim Danish hits the front again. Danish then going for his first victory in the European Talent Cup and he's looking like he may well do it. It's been a fantastic ride so far, but he's certainly going to have a tall order in stopping Max Kieler's the man at the moment, also the reigning world champion, the number one and the wild man there on the 47 with a day glow yellow helmet, Dodo Boggio. It's Brian Uriarte now, does three of them. Are you joking? Does three of them into turn eight. We'll call it a two and a half for because Pini got back ahead of him, but it's still great commitment there from Brian Uriarte from absolutely no nowhere and Max Kieles still is in the lead of this race. I don't know how it's happened, but he's still in here. Bit of a bobble on the front there from Pini as Brian Uriarte is late on the brakes. Right here, I said, there's going to be a lap to go. Who's going oh, to be late? Oh, Kieles has gone wide now, and that's left the door open for everyone to come through. He's not going to have anyone waving him on past. So one more lap to go of this incredible European Talent Cup action. Race number two. Here comes Boggio. Pini leads it. Oh, oh my Lord. Uriarte. 
hard to hit late on the brakes. He's lost back in the third, checks up his teammate Danish. We're looking at the AC Racing team. They can't believe what's happened. But it's Pini that leads it from Boggio, from Uriarte, Danish, and Kiles, who was leading it all but two corners ago, is now at the back of the group. So the reigning champion then, he's wanting to taste the fizzy water on the top step of the podium, isn't he? He hasn't got his title defence off to a winning start just yet, but this may well be the race that does it. Oh, Dodo it Boggio comes really close into turn five, and if Kiles wants to keep the the run of three wins, making it four going. He's going to have to do it from fifth, and he's only got half a lap left to do it. Powering down the back straight, five riders in this, it's a 10 wheel. Boggio goes to the left hand side of the circuit. They're fanning out across the racetrack. Oh, the bridge, Danish. here comes Danish again, side. Oh, oh, he's gone. No, Danish, he was pushing the front end too hard. He nearly wiped out the rest of them. Danish, he's out for the count here. So it's left the four that we had in race number one. Pini, he was so lucky to get away with that as Danish slid out across him. Here comes Boggio into the Aspar oh, corner on the Aspar. Oh, oh contact. Oh, sets up Brian Uriarte. Oh, Brian Uriarte, he's out for the counter. Oh, but Pini having a moment on the no, front end. Oh, Brian Uriarte, well. oh, are you joking me? That's amazing for Brian Uriarte. In second, here comes Kiles as well. He's found a way past Boggio as well. And Boggio's in the back, but all in the front of this, he's not seen anything that's happened as your reigning champion. Guido Pini, three corners to go for Pini, but here comes Udi Arte as well. He's got a great run. Two corners to go, he's got a great run. And two, Lorenzo Corner. Pini Surely trying not. to go defensive, laying the brakes. Who's it going to be? Surely Kiles. not. Surely oh, not. No, he's no, done no, it. No, no. Oh, bubble from Pini. Kiles could do this. The run to lane now. It's going to be Brian Udi Arte and Guido Pini in second. Oh, wow, Brian what a Uri Arte. Oh Brian my Uriarte. lord! What an incredible last lap from Brian Uriarte, who takes it by two hundreds of a second from Guido Pini and Max Pires ahead of Toto Boggio again oh, in man. fourth. Wow, what Brian a Uriarte. last lap! That is insanity. Well, around the outside, well, he's taken that from the Isan Guevara copybook, hasn't he? Incredible. He has. Did exactly what the 2022 Motor Free World Champion did just last year, round the outside of the final corner. You just don't do that. That's absolutely that is amazing. Great riding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How good was that, guys? What incredible. Absolutely brilliant. Guido Pini, he got mugged by Brian Uriarte on the last corner. He had it in the bag almost. But Brian Uriarte, commitment on the brakes, as we saw, into turn at number one as well. Into turn at number, well, turn number nine. He was so committed on the brakes, he lost the front a couple of times on the way in there, but it didn't stop him from swooping around the outside of Guido Pini, who we thought had it all sewn up as they entered the braking zone into turn number 13, Lorenzo Corner, and that is a move that would be celebrated by the legend Jorge Lorenzo himself as Guido Pini is happy with that enemy. That's another podium. That's two on the bounce today, and what an incredible ride that was from the champion. And we had a crash on the last lap. That was uh, Casey O'Gorman. That's such a shame. Casey O'Gorman and number 54, Jesus Rios, who came together in Valencia as well in race number one. They have gone down on the last lap together, potentially. So not sure what happened there for the Irishman and the young Spaniard. So such a shame there for O'Gorman and Jesus Rios. But no such shame for Brian Uriarte. The race winner here. Came into this race 10 points behind Max Kieles in the championship. With Max Kieles finishing third, that championship is now down to one point at the top of the standings. Brian Uriarte, third win of the season, equaling Max Kieles as well. And last year's champion, Guido Pini, has absolutely done himself a solid there by finishing second and throwing himself right back into championship contention as well. Further behind that, as we said, Dodo Boggio, he'll finish fourth again. That's five fourth places on the bounce. Talk about consistency. Ahead of Gonzalez, who got a terrible start at the, at the opening first lap of this race. Opening lap of this race, finishes fifth. And Fernandez Salmela from the back of the grid, he recovered brilliantly to finish in seventh ahead of Torres, Plonk, and Zani. Zani as well, who we saw at the start of the race pull off to the left. Uh, as he had a technical problem, he came from all the way at the back to finish in 10th, a top 10 for the number 95 in the Finite Work Mir Junior team. And uh, Fernandez, Donoso, and then you had further back Peroni and Alcina, who picks up another point in 15 spots. But here comes Brian Uriarte pushing his machine into Park Fermi. Incredible, incredible performance by Brian Uriarte. Timed it to incredible perfection. <laughs> been giving him cheers as well and the pats on the head. He well deserved that. There'll be celebrations in the 
Team Australia Galithia 0-0 box for the rest of the evening. Such a shame for his teammate Hakim Danish on the final lap as well. He went for the lead into turn number six, Pedroza corner. Just pushed a little bit too much and tucked the front. Guido Pini though, he was very lucky to avoid the, the fallen Hakim Danish. He picks up a well-earned second place and well, puts himself right back into championship contention with that ahead of the championship leader. So he's pulled four points back on the championship leader. There he is, Max Kieles. There he is. There's Jack Gorst in the background waiting to talk to not this man, but Brian Uriarty, your race two winner here in the European Talent Cup. So it's been five races down, six out, well, five races down, one more to go out of six here in Jerez. It's been a fantastic day's action. Cannot ask for a better day. The sun is shining around one of the most glorious racetracks in the world and we've had such great action. If you've missed any of it, make sure you go back and watch all of the racing action here from the Fennet Work FIM Junior GP World Championship. And this is what happened. This is the unfortunate Hakim Danish late on the brakes. He went for the lead sideways into Pedroza corner. Just pushed a little bit too hard. He was going to run wide anyway. And he just tucks the front and out he goes. So from what has been a promising weekend, that will be zero points. But look at that move. Brian Uriarty late on the brakes, swoops around the outside. Pini has a moment on the rear, so he was lucky not to be slipstreamed to the line by Max Aquiles, but Brian Uriarty, he came across the line to record what was an incredible victory and his third win of the season in the European Talent Cup, and only puts a one point behind your championship leader, Max Aquiles, as we head into Portimao in a month's time. Aha, big burnout, that's what you love to see, the donut as well. Yeah, you know someone really has the under stripes when they <laughs> perform a celebration like that. So from Donuts to Jack Gorst, he's down in Park Fermi speaking about his race victory. Yeah, I'm here with the winner of uh, an incredible race, Brian. That was unbelievable. That last corner move, just talk us through that because it was insane. So. Yeah, well, uh, in the turn eight, Todo touch me, you can see it, but well, uh, I didn't know how I overtake two riders in the same corner, and finally in the last uh, last corner I also overtake Vinny. But well, uh, I don't believe now. I, I, it's unbelievable how I do, but well, uh, I'm really really happy. Uh, the team made an amazing job. I've been working so hard uh, in home here, and well, the team knows, and he, they made a really good job. And when I want to say big thanks to them. Also, I want to dedicate this race to Luis, that we miss him a lot, also to Hugo, and well, also to my mom, that yesterday was his birthday, and well, uh, thanks to everyone. Congratulations, and just in Spanish as well for you, please. Eh, bueno, eh, todavía no me lo creo, una carrera increíble, la verdad. Eh, como podéis ver, todo me ha tocado la curva 8, pero bueno, eh, no sé cómo he adelantado a dos pilotos en la misma curva, y luego la última vuelta, ese, la última curva, ese movimiento que he hecho, pues no... No tengo aún claro cómo lo ha hecho, pero bueno, estoy muy contento, estoy aquí y solo quiero dar las gracias al equipo por cómo trabajan en casa, aquí, siempre. Y bueno, dedicar estas carreras a Hugo, a Luis, que le echamos mucho de menos, a mi madre, que ayer fue su cumpleaños, y bueno, dar las gracias a toda la gente que ha hecho esto posible. Congratulations, see you next time. Well, happy birthday to Brian Uriarty's mum. She couldn't have wished for a better present and her son taking victory here today in Jerez. And this is how he did it. He slotted into second after the lights went out behind the championship rival Max Kieles. But it wasn't long before he would swoop into the lead in front of Max Kieles. A brilliant move around the outside of your championship leader in turn number five. It was the top four from the first race they were in race winning contention, but they had Ferrandez and Hakim Danish joining them this time round before. Unfortunate, a moment for Ferrandez would drop him back in the chasing group. Big moment there, chattering away for Guido Pini on the front end into turn number six. So six became five with Hakim Danish showing what he could have done in race one had he not had the technical problems. A great move up the inside by Guido Pini on Max Kieles in the early stage of the race before he'd done his signature move up the inside at Aspar corner at turn number eight. Matt, Brian Uriarty and Guido Pini would chop and change the lead a couple of times before we had this crash for the back for the number 81 of Luciano and Brenton in turn at number six. With handful laps to go, it was five abreast into turn number six and it was Kiles once again that would retake the lead from Uriarty, but it wouldn't stay like that for long. Uriarty found a great move into turn at number nine. He would later use that on the final lap as well. Kiles ran a little bit wide, opening the door for everyone to come through and he'd eventually drop from first back to fifth with only a 
few more laps to go. And it was a few more laps to go. We had Danish up the inside in the final lap, tucking the front into Pedroza corners. Zero points for him here today. But it was Uri Arte with this move around the outside and Guido Pini into the final corner. The sealed victory. Pini very lucky to stay on board and he would slot in for second place. But Brian Uri Arte becomes a race winner. Race number two here and Jerez holding off Guido Pini, Max Quiles and Dodo Boggio for a third race win and one of the most important race wins and hard fought race wins of his career. Wow, five races down of the day, European Talent Cup action as brilliant as you like. And we're about to get the top three on the podium. And I can't imagine there's anyone that's a little bit too dejected with how they performed in that one. Babyface Max Giles comes out into podium first, your championship leader. Third place for him today, Guido Pini, the reigning champion. And look at Brian Uriarty. So he just celebrated his mum's birthday with the best way possible a victory here today and he'll be taking that back to her I'm pretty sure as a birthday present so the team Israel Galicia 0-0 team received the race winners trophy their first time since Estoril back in April Max Giles that is a third place for him his first third place of the year so he's filled at the top four spots in every single race he's competed in this year three race wins a second a third and a fourth as well Vice President of FIM Europe hands over Guido Pini his second place trophy. That's the sec that's his third podium and four races for the reigning champion. But none more so will be any happier than this man, Brian Udiarty. He's done it. Race two victor, and of course he's slotted himself right behind championship contender Max Kieler is one point behind. Well, Brian Udiarty absolutely overjoyed on top of the podium there. What a result that was. They spray the sparkling water and a little bit too young for any of the, the more stronger stuff, so to speak. <laughs> strong apple juice. Yeah, a lot of very strong apple juice indeed. Keyless chucks it over all these mechanics. He must be absolutely roasting down there today, today because it's a hugely warm day. I have and to say, actually, Hodjo, uh, just going out there now, there's a little bit of cloud come over, like very thin cloud cover come over. It doesn't feel quite as bad. Oh, not so bad. Well, so maybe for the the stock 600 guys just coming up, uh, they've got a little bit of relief from from the searing heat. Well, we'll definitely have to take a little bit of uh, cooling action after the five incredible races we've had <laughs> here today under the scorching sunshine of Hereth. Brilliant day's action. I absolutely loved it. We've still got one more to go and we know that's going to be an absolute cracker as well, the European Stock Championship. But here are your standings. There's Brian Uriarty who held off Kiro Pini by two hundredths of a second. Max Kiela is the top three covered by less than a tenth of a second. Dodo Boggio in fourth spot ahead of David Gonzalez, Alberto Fernandez who couldn't quite match the speed of the leaders after he had a small mistake. Rico Salmela from the back of the grid in seventh. Brilliant stuff for him. Here's your Torres and Guillaume Plonk rounding out the top nine. In 10th spot, also coming from the back after problems at the start line was Leonardo Zani on the Fennet Work Mir racing team ahead of Benyat Fernandez, Adriano Donoso, Eduardo Licori, and Valentin Peroni with Pau Alcina rounding out your points paying positions ahead of Perez and Owen Van Triet in 17th spot. Pedro Olomar in 18th ahead of Marios Nicolas, who came through the last chance race and a good result for him, the young Australian in 19th ahead of Eduardo Bertola, Yvonne Serpa, Guido Pugliese, who showed very well in Estoril, but has not really found that form since. And Wojciechowski in 23rd spot, remounting after his crash earlier on today. And there he is, Hakim Danish, out for the <laughs> count on the final lap. Such a shame, Hakim yeah. Danish was in for a podium contention and would have potentially been on the podium or potentially won his race, which is such a shame for the young Malaysian. So look at that then, one point split Max Keyless and Brian Ariati at the top of the standings. We've got a real championship on here, folks. 49 points back there is Rico Samelo, who had an incredible ride, the flying field, all the way from the back of the grid to seventh place. 
Pini, Boggio, Gonzalez, Ferrandez, Torres and Pugilesi. Obviously Pini there in fourth place. Still some work to do if he wants to close in, but a better weekend here this weekend. Danish in 10th from Plonk, Alcina, Fernandez, Rios, Moodley, Donoso and Emmanuel Brinton there who crashed out a little bit later on. He's down there, 17th, 12 points. And from 18th onwards, Casey O'Gorman, who uh, oh, he also crashed out in the final lap of the final corner. No luck at all for the young Irishman so far in 2023. Luciano, Zani, Liguri, Al Sahuti, Daniel Perez, and Pedro Alomar down in 25th with three points. And the last of the point scorers so far in 2023, Perone, Thompson, and Van Tritt. Well, I can guarantee there's no cyclist on the circuit, if that's what you were wondering. This was recorded another day, but no cyclist on the circuit. Just incredibly fast motorcycle racers, and no one was as fast as this man on screen in the European Talent Cup. Brian Uriarty takes victory here for race number two at Sokito de Jerez and Hel Nieto. The European Talent Cup will be back in a month's time when we head to Portimao for more European Talent Cup action. Who will it be as Max Quiles leads the championship over Brian Uriarty by one point.